Time for the standard Boilermaker warning. Go slow and take your time to avoid getting hurt. I'm trying to grow this YouTube channel here, and if my followers are getting hurt, it's surely going to impede the progress. If you're unsure at any time, consult a professional. Welcome to another episode of Vic's Garage. This is episode four of the Charger Build. It's a cold December day. I got my coffee here and I've got my checklist to help me stay organized. We're gonna start working on getting the motor and transmission out of the car. I've pulled the motor before, but I've never pulled the transmission with the motor. So uh, I need this little list thing here to keep me on track. I'm gonna start working from the rear to the front, starting with the drive shaft, draining fluids in the transmission and whatnot. And then obviously ending with the motor and transmission coming out as a combo. Uh, excuse any terminology or, or uh, mislabeling of parts I get wrong. I'm not a mechanic, but um, well, whatever. I got to get it done anyways, right? So let's get started and uh, not waste any more time. So to start, I unbolted the drive shaft from the rear differential yoke. It's four 3 8 bolts holding two clamps. Because I had the car safely sported on jack stands, I'm able to leave the transmission in neutral and rotate the drive shaft to make it easier to access the various bolts. If the car was on the ground with the wheels chalked, it may be harder to reach some of them. Now remove your exhaust system. I built this one myself, so it was simply bolted to the headers and was held together with clamps at the rear. The hardest part was getting the tailpipes out as the three inch exhaust didn't leave a lot of room. Depending how yours is constructed, you may have to cut it off. I would use a sawzall and a good metal cutting blade. Now, drain your transmission. This will likely get messy if you don't have a drain plug. Unbolt all the bolts, but leave two bolts in loose on one side so the pan doesn't drop and that the fluids come out in somewhat controlled manner. Mark the position of the drive shaft and yoke with chalk. It will ensure you install it correctly later. Now that the exhaust is out of the way and the transmission is drained, separate the drive shaft from the yoke. To do so, push it towards the transmission and slide it out from the front. A bit of fluid may come out, but it should be minimal since you've drained it. So you gotta remove the speedometer cable right here. Finish disconnecting the rest of the linkage. It's disconnected from its bracket, but a few more pieces I gotta disconnect to get out. There's two transmission cooler lines, or oil lines, one from here, and you can see one in the front up there. The neutral safety switch, which you can see right here, was already disconnected because I had problems with it before and I had it bypassed. And then there's the throttle linkage, which is part of this here. Uh, you can see it in front. <laughs> Let's see if I can get to it. Give it a little wiggle. It's right up in here. Disconnect that as well. And then the transmission stuff should be done outside of the cross member. Just don't want to have this rolling down here the whole time because it's obviously not very conducive to lying on the ground and filming. And it's just kind of shitty. So any competent person should be able to work from what I've showed you here. And if I can do it, then you can. So I just got the transmission lines disconnected. I just wanted to show you where that front 
uh, cool at my nipple is there. What a pain in the ass that one was to get to. And the long tube headers do not help. Next, drain your rad. I disconnected my lower rad hose as my drain plug was seized. Take your rad cap off and it will flow easier. Do your best to catch your fluids, but again, you will likely make a mess. I also had to remove my fan in order to get the rad out. My clutch fan was held in place with four half inch bolts. With the fan out, now unbolt your rad and it will lift right out with the shroud on it. The fins on a rad are easily damaged. It's a good idea to tape some cardboard to the sides to protect it. Unbolt your power steering pump and tie it off to the side. Trust me on this, don't disconnect the lines. Disconnect the fuel lines to your carb and the throttle linkage. The linkage should come right out now as it's not connected to the transmission anymore. My car was held on by four half inch nuts on studs, but this is by no means standard. Once those are removed, the carbs should come right off. When you remove the distributor, stuff a clean rag in the hole to prevent debris from getting in. You may be able to remove the motor with the headers or manifolds on if clearances permit, but I know I had to install my headers in the bottom on a hoist, so I removed spark plugs and unbolted the headers to let them hang in the engine bay. I'm just going to use this to show the motor mount location. It's kind of a pain in the ass to set up the camera, but it's on both sides of the motor, just by the headers, just at the rear of the K frame. You'll see the mount bolts there. There's one there, and then one on the other side of the oil pan. It's a 11 16th, so I'm just going to get going on that, and then she'll be ready to pull.
Replace a jack with a board under the transmission and jack it just slightly to take the weight off the transmission crossmember. Unbolt the four 916 bolts for the crossmember and remove two of them completely. Leave the two bolts on the outside with no nut on them and just to hold the crossmember in place for now so the transmission is supported. Remove the 3 quarter inch bolt from the rear mount, then carefully lower the transmission back down. Now you should be ready to lift the motor and transmission. You should have at least two people to do this. Lower the vehicle back to the ground, then attach your hoist to the motor. An engine leveler will make this process much easier. I've seen it done without, but why make it harder than it needs to be? Extend the boom only as far as it needs to go. If it's too far, the lift will be front heavy and may tip. Your hardware will dictate where you lift from, so familiarize yourself with the tools you're using. I use the bolt holes in the front and rear of the cylinder heads to attach my leveler. Lift just till the chains are tight and the hoist is bearing the weight. At this time, I had to put the jack back under the transmission and take some of the weight off the crossmember. With the weight off, the two bolts holding the crossmember in place can slide out easily and you can remove it. Slowly lower the jack and remove it. Now enjoy some shots of my derriere and my high school jeans from episode 2. While lifting, make sure not to put your hands between crush points. I need all my followers to have fingers so they can type in my comment section and share my videos. As you lift, it will get hung up. Push and shift away from a safe spot or use a pry bar. Go slowly as to not get hurt or damage your car. As you can see, it's a combination of lifting a little, using the leveler to tilt the motor and transmission a little, and rolling the car back a little. It gets busy pretty quickly, and you can see why having an extra person helps and is basically necessary. As Murphy's Law would dictate, my camera died trying to get the money shot. But keep doing what we were doing. Lift a little, tilt a little, roll the car back a little, and it will come out. Once out, I lowered it to the ground slowly where I separated the transmission from the motor. You don't have to do this if you intend to put it back as a unit. Just support it with an old tire or something so that the weight isn't on the oil pan. Well there you have it guys, motor and trains out of the car and not too hard of a process. Sucks that the video died as we were actually lifting the motor and transmission out, but it's essentially just lift a little, move the car a little, check clearances, wiggle things around, and just take it nice and slow.
piece by piece, second by second, and no rush. Second hand helps, which I had to ring up my buddy to give me a hand with that. Um, but you get the gist of it. The rest of the video shows you basically the process I did to take the motor and transmission out. Just unfortunately missed the actual lift, which sucks. But hopefully this gives anyone uh, the confidence to maybe try it if they're thinking about doing this, because if I can do it, anyone can. Uh, well, that's about it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. Throw any comments in the section, uh, comment section below if you got tips to make this easier for myself on the next time. And uh, we'll see you at the next video. Have a good day.